Hey guys, so for today's video, as you can tell probably by the pile of white clothes on my table, we are going to be tie-dyeing everything in my closet. Way too excited. And this is going to be a thrift flip because it's just things that I had in my closet that I don't like anymore or that are stained and I can't really wear. So I found everything that's white and I'm going to be tie-dyeing them. This was a suggestion that was actually made by a subscriber named Maggie. Uh, but it's also just something I've really wanted to do for a while, and I finally got all the tie-dye materials and everything, so yeah, we're doing tie-dye. If you follow me on Instagram, you already probably saw I did post a hint um, of me laying in a pile of white clothes. And yeah, let's just get started and start tie-dyeing things. These are all of my clothes. We can go through them. So we've got this first shirt, which is clearly not totally white. It was white at one point, but I think I washed it with like something that was pink or red and it changed colors. Okay, this always happens to me, I swear. In person, that looks like a light pink gray color, but on camera, it's looking white. I don't know what to tell you. So I never really wear this anyway, but I figured if I tie dyed it, it might come out good. And then I have this plain white t-shirt. It's probably like my dad's undershirt, to be honest. Uh, and then I have two socks, because I thought that'd be fun to tie dye socks. I also have a white pillowcase, which is always fun to have a tie-dyed pillowcase, that's cool. I have this old t-shirt, which is kind of yellowy and it has stains all over it. I don't know if you can see it, but there are stains on this, so that's gonna be good to tie-dye. This pair of pants, they are white and I just don't like them white. They're like a weird color white and they're also um, vaguely see-through and I think if I put tie-dye on it, they won't be see-through, so this will be cool. I have these shorts, which my sister actually got um, foundation on the butt. What? So I don't wear these, so I think this will be good to tie-dye. And then I have my favorite thing that I'm so excited to tie-dye. This is an old sweatshirt of mine. It's an Adidas white sweatshirt. It's very big. It's like an oversized sweatshirt. And it does have like some like yellowy stains around it just because it's been worn so much. Okay, so I have all of my materials out on the table. The first thing we have to do is just kind of get the dye together. The kind of dye that I got was Rit dye. So to put that together, you need two cups of hot water and one tablespoon of dye. This is just warm water. It's not too hot. Oh, it's kind of hot. Jeez, ow. Perfect. So then we're gonna put ugh, one tablespoon of the dye. Shoot. Oh no, this might have been a mistake. I have no aim. That was a really big mistake. Oh. Oh no. Ah. How did I do it perfectly last time? I don't understand that. In order, we've got gray, aquamarine, sandstone. I'm just gonna do the other three while I'm at it because this is stressful and I just wanna be done with mixing these colors. I like how I put two cups in each of these, but they're all different heights. That's not correct. Avoid contact with eyes. Yeah, okay. This looks dangerous. I got acrylic spray in my left eye. I lived, it turned out fine. Okay, moving into the actual tie-dyeing part, I tried to incorporate a lot of different types of ways to tie-dye. So this first method is a scrunching method combined with ice dyeing. I opted to also include the shorts in this because I wanted to create like a combo. So I did a rolling on the thing. Okay, so I used gray and teal. And for ice dyeing, if you don't know what ice dyeing is, basically wherever you put the ice, um, there will be a lighter amount of color. So it, it does create like a cloudy effect. You're supposed to let the ice melt through the clothes and then there'll be less dye wherever the cubes are and more dye wherever the cubes were not science. Um, so I did that for both the pants and the shorts, and then I had to let that melt throughout the whole process of me tie-dyeing things. And for this, I wanted the tie-dye to come out light. I didn't want it to be too much. I wanted it to be just enough, you know? Okay, moving on. I used sandstone, orange, and navy. Um, so for this, I'm doing a, I don't know what to call it. I guess it's like a stripe. Mm, I don't know. I cinched it from the corner and went in like a line, I guess. You can watch what I'm doing. Okay, so from the corner I did denim and then I did orange and then I did sandstone, um, which is like a tan color. I really liked the sandstone. And then navy again, orange again, and sandstone again. Then I wrapped it up in my plastic wrap and then I put it 
in the microwave and hold that thought, I can explain. But first we have to check in on our melting ice cubes. They're still melting. And we also have to start the white pants, which I used gray, navy, and teal for. And then I just poured it on, you know. And now I will explain why I've been microwaving my clothes to tie-dye things. So basically, RIT dye activates when it's hot, and I watched a lot of tutorials from RIT itself, like the company, and they told me to wrap my clothes in plastic wrap and put it in the microwave for two minutes, and then that's it. So this is the easiest tie-dyeing I've ever had. Usually I have to leave tie-dye overnight for 24 hours, but with this method, you just pour it on, as long as it's like hot water, and then you wrap it up and put it in the microwave for two minutes, and it comes out great, and then you just throw it in the wash, and you're like, wow, that was the fastest tie-dyeing method I ever had. So in the microwave we go. I let that baby sit for two minutes. It came out great. Okay, this is still melting. Um, it's not quite done yet, but it's almost done, and I'm gonna do a t-shirt instead while this melts a little more. Okay, so for this t-shirt, I decided to do an ombre. So I wanted to do a different kind of tie-dye effect since I did like some swirls, I did the ice dyeing, I did like a weird line thing before. So now I wanted to do an ombre since I didn't have many colors. You'll notice that I don't have many colors, first of all. Um, I went to Michael's and I bought every color that they had. They didn't have like a classic tie-dye kit. They just had these RIT dyes, which I was pretty happy with um, because of the microwave thing. The microwave thing was amazing that I got to just microwave it for two minutes. Uh, but yeah, I just created like an ombre by pouring it. You watched it. Um, then I tried to tie-dye my socks, which didn't turn out too well. Um, I'm just skipping through this one because honestly, I just turned the socks blue. I did not create a tie-dye on that. And then this thing was finally done, basically, you know, that's basically done melting, so I put that in the microwave too. <laughs> um, okay, so then we are doing the sweatshirt, which is my favorite one. So I decided to do the classic swirl on this one, but from the corner. I didn't put it in the center. Um, and it took a while to wrap that up because I was really thick. So once I got that extra large oversized hoodie wrapped up and put in rubber bands, um, I then started to do the dye. For this, I used aquamarine, sandstone, and I'm trying to remember the other one. What was the other one? Aquamarine, sandstone. Well, we'll see it in a second anyway. Um, so I just, oh, gray and gray. Aquamarine, sandstone, and gray. And I put it in the corners like a pizza and left the white part free. And then you flip it over and you do the exact same thing. Just make sure the triangles are lined up. I think most of us know how to do the classic tie-dye swirl at this point, maybe, but if you don't, there it is. That's how you do it. Um, the only thing that was slightly annoying about this method using RIT dye is if you need to use rubber bands, you can't microwave rubber bands. So you gotta take the rubber bands off before you put it in the microwave and that could ruin it. It didn't ruin it for me, but something to be aware of. All right, and now it's time for the fun part the results will go in the order that I presented them to begin with. First up, we've got this, which was ice dyed with blue and gray. It's very light clouds, like light blue and gray, stormy clouds. The dye didn't really take too well to this type of material. I don't know what this is, but I don't think it's cotton. It must not have been because it didn't take very well, but I like it. I mean, this is this is moderately good ice dyeing results, you know, because ice dyeing is supposed to look like cloudy. It's not supposed to look like a typical tie-dye thing, so, okay. So this is the first t-shirt. I decided to spin it from the corner. I like this a lot. I think this one came out really good. I think this is one of my favorite tie-dyes for a t-shirt. You know, it's like a classic, you know? It's just a spin from the corner instead of having it in the center. I like it. For this one, I decided not to do a spinny tie-dye thing. I decided to pour it horizontally. And since I only had minimal colors, I was trying to create like a rainbow gradient kind of thing. It's not in correct rainbow order, I don't think. Red, orange, green. No, it's not in rainbow order, but it's it's like a gradient and I like it. I, I like it. I, I It's not my favorite, but it's not my least favorite, I think. So now we're moving on to the pants. For the long pants, I thought I messed this up at first, but honestly, I never liked these pants. That's why I was okay with tie dyeing them. They're like a little too tight and they were see-through before and they're not see-through anymore. 
And I guess I like the tie-dye method. Like, the way it looks, I like the way it looks. I just don't like the pants. So it's not, you know what I mean? It's like, it's not me. It's, it's not you, it's me. You know what I mean? It's like, these are fine on a smaller person. They're just too tight on me to begin with. But I like the tie-dye results. I like the colors, you know? Moving on to the shorts, which I may have to redo. So I love the front. Like, I really like the way this came out. I love the faded look. I love cool tones. These are like my favorite colors. I love like gray, blue, like a bluish purple, green. This is perfect for me. I love the muted tone, you know. Uh, the only thing is the back of it, I don't like that it didn't come out on the pockets. And at first I was like, oh, it's like a cool thing. It's like everything is colored except the pockets. They're white. But then I'm like... I just don't like that. So I think I'm gonna have to go fix that again, but these came out good and they have a lot of potential. I also wanted to show that this is like a combo outfit. I love these together and I don't know what I was saying. I was being really negative. I actually really like this. This looks really good. I don't know what I'm saying. Not to toot my own horn, but I feel like this looks like a tie-dye thing I would buy in a store. Like, you know, like this just looks, this doesn't look like I tie-dyed it to me. This looks like I bought this and that was what I was going for here with these colors today. And that's why I'm excited about this one. This one's good. I love this one. You will see me wear this one. I love this one. And then the last two things are the two miscellaneous. We've got these two socks, which honestly didn't turn out good. I should have stopped when I was just doing the blue and left it at blue and white, but I tried to fill it in with gray and the, it just looks like I dyed my socks blue. This was a fail. But that's okay. And then we have this, which was not a fail. And this is gonna be great in my room. We have my pillowcase and I missed myself taping it, but basically I just did like a classic swirl with like blue and teal. And it created this. Look how cool that is. Perfect, I love it. So that is the end of the video, guys. I did do one more tie-dye method on my Instagram TV, IGTV. It's bleach dyeing. I bleach dyed like a hot pink dress. It turned out really cool. Oh, I love it. So if you want to see that, you can check out my IGTV. It's underscore Bellamina. You can follow me there and you can see that. And that's the end of the video. Subscribe if you want to, otherwise don't. And I will see you next video. Bye. Wait, 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 wait. We have the <clears throat> shout outs. We've got Eva, Fun Ways to Draw, Tessica, and Juicebox Productions. Hello, guys. They actually commented their favorite video that I've done on my last video and also shared my last video with a friend. Uh, so thank you for doing that, guys. Hello. This is your shout out. Um, if, if you would like a shout out, I have instructions in the description of this video and you can follow those and that's how you can get a shout out in my next video. And that is the end of the video. I will see you next week. Bye.